Welcome to PCMRP's video tutorial series. In this video, we'll cover an overview of how to enter customer and vendor addresses, part numbers, and bonds. This information should be entered into the PCMRP before our firm starts to enter sales orders and purchase orders. Let's start with entering an, a vendor or a customer address. To enter an address, you would click on Modules, Address Book, and New. Enter the company name and address, so I'll learn ABC Tools, A, B, C, space, T, O, O, L, S, space, I, N, C, period. Since this is a customer, I will select customer. If this were a vendor, I would s simply select vendor. However, since this is a customer, I'll keep it as a customer. I'll enter my contact at that company, Tom Edwards, T, O, M, E, W, a R D S. The street address will be 123 Any Street. Let's see. 123 space A N Y space S T R E E T. The city will be anywhere. A N Y W E or W H E R E. Uh, let's make the state California C A. The phone number will be 408 dash. 123-1234. The email address will be tom at abctools.com. T-O-M at A-B-C-T-O-O-L-S dot C-O-M. If I click on the contacts tab, I can add unlimited contacts per address. So I will add Mr. Jim Johnson, President. Let's see, MR period, J I M space Johnson, J O H S O N, and President, P R E S I D E N T. I'll enter his email address, Jim at abctools.com, J I M at A B C T O O L S dot C O M. I can add unlimited contact methods per contact. So I'll add his cell phone number. Let's see, cell, C-E-L-L, 333-444-5555. I can add additional unlimited information by clicking on his sales contact information tab. Here I could put in his birthday, things like that. I'll enter California, CA, as the region, and West Coast as the territory. This means in the future I can slice and dice my sales by territory and region. I can select Net30 as the default terms for this customer. I can also record the source that got us this customer. Incidentally, all these drop-down list boxes can be modified by using option 52 in the Configuration Settings and Utilities module. The Billing and Shipping tab can be used to enter shipping and billing address if they are different from the main address. The Documents tab will display all the documents for this customer, such as sales quotes, sales orders, invoices, and if you are a vendor, purchase orders, receivers, purchase requests, purchase quotes, etc. One thing that is new in version 8.0 is the File Links button. It will allow you to pull up and display or print any document that your customer or vendor would send to you, such as a PO or specifications. Once you have your customers and vendors, you are ready to enter your component part numbers. To enter a new part number, Select Modules, Inventory, and New. Let's see. I will accept 17 as the next available part number. Please note that I can enter any alpha characters I wish for a part number as long as it's no longer than 15 characters. I will select Part Inventory as the part type. Note that I can set it as Part Inventory, Part Non-Inventory, pencil, papers, etc., Assembly, inside labor such as welding or assembly, uh, outside labor such as labor for sending a bumper out for chrome plating. I can enter the part description. Here I'll enter RIM, R-I-M. I'll enter my average cost as $4.50. The stocking unit is EA for each. I will enter 10 days as the lead time. I'll enter 6 as the quantity in stock. I'll enter a PO unit of each 
and assign the part number or the part to our buyer Nick and I'll leave the PO ratio at 1 since I'm buying and issuing in the same unit. I'll enter the price quantity break of $5 each for a quantity from 1 to 9. 10 or more will be $4.50 each. 400 or more will be $3.75 each. Please note that all unit costs such as average, standard, and last PO and vendor price quantity breaks are the cost per issuing unit and not the cost per buying unit. I can click on the sales price tab and set my selling costs. I can have five different levels of customers. For example, level one customer could be a distributor. Level two customers could be a retailer and level three customers could be end users. The details one tab allows me to enter a picture of the parts. I'll locate a picture of a rim. I can enter up to nine different customers, vendors, and or manufacturer part numbers. Incidentally, if you click on the manufacturer's part number button, PCMRP can automatically download price quantity breaks from DigiKey, Mauser, Allied, TTI, and Avnet. The Details 2 tab will allow you to enter an unlimited description for that part number. Wait and select the chart of account numbers to be debited and credited if the part or assembly is purchased or sold. I can also check this part is serializable. PCMRP would then ask per the person to record the serial or lot number whenever the part is received, issued, manufactured, or invoiced. Checking floor stock would keep PCMRP from issuing this part to manufacturing, as this part would be stocked out on the manufacturing floor. The QuickBooks tab would allow you to set the QuickBooks chart of accounts to be debited or credited in the event this part is purchased or sold. Once you've entered all your part numbers, you are ready to enter or import your bill of materials. You are now ready to enter and or edit a bill of materials. To enter a BOM, you would select Modules, Bombs, and New. I will select 18 as my new BOM number. I'll enter Wheel Assembly, 17 inch as my BOM description. Let's see, Wheel, W-H-E-E-L. A S S E M B L Y comma one seven and the inch mark. All right, I will select. I will click on the part number lookup button and select my rim as the first part that goes into my 17 inch wheel assembly. I will select a quantity of one rim per 17 inch wheel assembly. I will press the OK button. I'll add a bearing by pressing the Add button. Once again, I'll enter a quantity of one. Please notice that I can enter an unlimited number of reference designators for each part number in a bomb. I'll press the OK button, and I'm going to add another line item or another item to our bomb by pressing the Add button again. This time I will add uh, spokes, and I'll make the quantity 50, and I will press the OK button. To save my new bomb, I'll press the Finish button. So, let's add this subassembly to a higher level assembly. I'll do that by selecting Modules, Bombs, and Edit. I will select a rear wheel saxle assembly. I will click on the Add button and select my new wheel assembly, and enter a quantity of four, and then I'll press the OK button. Now I can see my wheel assembly is part of the rear wheel assembly. I can press on the on the move to subassembly button and actually view or edit my new bomb. To move back to my parent assembly, I can press the move to parent assembly button. Once again, I am going to save my changes to the parent by clicking on the finish button. To print out my new bomb, I will select modules bomb, and print bombs. I will select costed, exploded. I'll scroll and look up my bomb. I'll send the report to display, and I'm going to hit the OK button. 
As you can see, PCMRP prints out a exploded indented bombs with each level marked by a period. It also rolls up the total cost for you. Now that you have your customers, vendors, parts, and bombs loaded into PCMRP, you are ready to enter sales orders, purchase orders, and allow PCMRP to schedule your workflow. PCMRP's walkthrough video part two continues on the next step. Thank you.